keeps his curiosity cranked to 11. Calgary Today with Joe McFarland on 770 CHQR. Fresh off a little vacay. Eric Southward, Co-op Wine Spirits and Beers joining us here. And how was that vacay? It was great. Any, uh... I guess I say it's always nice to leave the kids at home. Yep. You know, it's nice to come back to, you know, to the kids. But man, any holiday without the kids is it's glorious. When you work in the hospitality business, when you work in something like wine business, mm -hmm. is it hard to separate your work and your home life when you go on vacation because I'm the same way I like I love baseball and so I'm always looking for hey maybe like even in Ireland I was sitting there going I wonder if there's a baseball game kicking around somewhere and you're going no 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 don't mix that like yeah, yeah. time with the wife is time with the wife right? right so do you have that difficulty yeah I, I think you know I I'm I'm a small ape because I, I love food and wine I like yeah. to cook I like to eat and drink really well and um, sometimes my wife doesn't need to spend hundreds of dollars on a meal. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's how I kind of like good to with it. Wendy's, Eric. That's We're right. good with yeah, Wendy's. Yes. We had a great, uh, in Montreal, we were in Montreal and Quebec city and we just had a great bowl of like noodle soup in Chinatown, you know, that was 13 bucks. And I like to eat like that too, but yeah. every now and then I like to splurge and she's like, we don't need to, we don't need to do that multiple times on our trip. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, okay, good. Highlight of the trip. Yeah. Um, I spent some time with my, uh, with my mom's, uh, brothers and, and sister who were all like in their early eighties and they're sharp as a tack and hilarious and don't speak any English there in Quebec city. And I was just trying to keep up with their fast French <laughs> and it was awesome. It was great. And, uh, that was, that was a highlight for sure. So are you actually fluent in French? I wouldn't say fluent. I would say I caught probably two thirds of what they yeah. were going on about the other time I was nodding and smiling and, and uh, translating for my wife, but it's, uh, it was always great. Yeah. Cereal box French. Yeah, that's right. Yes. You yeah. can, that's, that's the Alberta way or so I've been told. <laughs> so, uh, we're not here to talk anymore about uh, your, your vacay. Let's that's get right. into the wine because uh, you guys have a lot going on. Obviously we're, we're heading into Thanksgiving first and foremost. And yeah. so uh, back to some of the basics again, in terms of hosting and, and catering to the crowd that you're bound to have. Yeah. Yeah. This is, you know, other than Christmas and, you know, Thanksgiving and Easter are massive mm -hmm. in our industry. It's going to be a busy weekend in our co-op locations. Any holiday that really revolves around a meal. Um, so it's big, big weekend for people, a lot of hosting, and, and we want to help you just make it as easy and painless as possible. So if we can help you do that, we'd love to help. Um, and so today, you know, we're trying here on the show some some Pinot Gris from from the Okanagan Falls region in uh, in British Columbia. And anything with the word Pinot in it essentially goes great with turkey. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you don't know what to grab in the liquor store uh, this weekend, Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Noir, these are all grapes that will go with generally what we serve at Thanksgiving. Um, and they don't have to be expensive. Pinot Gris is the most widely planted grape in the Okanagan. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive. Okanagan wines can be a little pricey. Um, but Pinot Gris, always good bang for the buck. And it just goes with, it goes with gobble gobble. It mm -hmm. goes with turkey. It goes with all the fixings, you know, the mashed potatoes, the stuffing, all that stuff. Is this one of the, uh, Easter's the same kind of thing. Is mm -hmm. that there's a bit of a, a, I think turkey is, is going to be for Christmas, but I think Thanksgiving and Easter seems to be those two where you can go, ah, oh, let's do ham this time or yeah. roast beef or whatever. And so I suppose that really highlights the, the need if you're thinking about getting wine is to go and talk to somebody like yourself to mm -hmm. be able to say, hey, I'm having macaroni and cheese. What is yeah. going to be, you know, like as weird as it sounds, I know people who've done it. Absolutely. Uh, and so the, the, the pairings come really important at, at this time of year. Yeah, it, absolutely. And, and I think the trick to, to a, you know, a dinner where you're having a, quite a few people, it, it's not a small intimate affair. You want wines that are crowd pleasing. I always mm -hmm. tell people, don't, don't get anything too funky or weird when you're hosting, you know, you know, eight, 10, 12 people, because chances are, yeah, one or two people might really love it, but the rest of your people are going to, mm. it's going to turn them off. So get something that a lot of fruity flavors, nothing, you know, too, too sweet, sweet wines can be a hit or miss. Yep. Um, nothing that smells like dirt or mushrooms or anything weird. Just get something fruity and fresh, preferably unoaked. Cause again, oak can be a, a lover hate thing in your wine. So this Pinot Gris, again, unoaked wine, uh, doesn't have any new oak flavor on it. It's just crisp and fruity smells and tastes like, you know, pears and yellow apples. And it's uh, not too acidic, but there's mm. some lovely brightness to the wine. goes with virtually anything. So if even if you're serving salmon or turkey or duck, um, ham uh, mm. as well, you know, this is something that can go with everything. 
so if you're going to shop last minute uh, and you want to get the wine out of the way first, you can get this and, and figure out the menu later. And the nice thing about something that is, I'll call it accessible, is something like this by the looks of it, is that um, it'll go well for the post-meal yeah. drink as well, right? Like it's something yeah. that you d won't worry about having the second or third one afterwards. Yeah, this could be... You know, pre-meal while you're cooking, always nice to have a glass of mm -hmm. wine, right? Uh, that's my favorite time to have a glass of wine while I'm cooking. But yeah, post-meal as well, it'll transition into that. This is just something that we we call it a wine that you could use almost like a cocktail. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just It's a standalone as a drink. You don't have to be eating anything with it. But as the food arrives or after, you know, some nibblies before or after dinner, uh, cheese or something like that, this will handle those really well. We haven't talked a lot about BC wines lately. And mm -hmm. so what's uh, what's this one all about, this particular winery one and two? What's yeah. the scene like out in BC? So this is uh, from a winery called Wild Goose. And they've been making grapes actually relatively a long time for BC wine. They planted their first vineyards in 1983. Uh, okay. And they've been making really good Riesling, Pinot Gris, Gewürztraminer for quite a while. Um, and BC wines are, are really popular in this market. Mm -hmm. I think we don't get as much as we would like. We could sell a lot more BC wine in this market. Mm -hmm. uh, people travel to Kelowna and, and Penticton yeah. and, and Soyuz and, and all that stuff and fall in love with the, the place and the wines. Um, and the reality is the climate really suits white wine and lighter reds. Um, we can make a few heavier reds in different you know pockets of the Okanagan. Um, and, and so I think... Uh, you know, that might not line up a lot of the times with our tastes here in Alberta. So I think BC wines are trying to figure out where do we fit because a lot of times people want big, heavy, rich right. reds. Um, but what they do best is Pinot Gris, right? Mm. This is the grape that's kind of uh, come out on top in terms of what just naturally does well in the Okanagan. Um, and, and again, I think it is crowd pleasing. I think people do like white wine a lot. We're not, we, there is a time and place for white wine. Uh, but but again, that's the sweet spot. The light reds like Pinot Noir, Gamay, uh, a grape like Cabernet Franc is a little more medium bodied, but it does well. And then the whites, the Riesling, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc. That seems to be what Okanagan is doing really well. And this one, again, give the, the folks a little detail again in the price point. Yeah, well. absolutely. So this is something you can find at every co-op location this weekend. We'll we be pushing this wine all weekend because it is great with turkey. It's the Wild Goose Pinot Gris, about $23.50. Uh, so it's not, you know, cheap, but it's not going to break the bank. You want to, you want something nice for, for holiday weekend and a, and a special meal. Uh, this will cozy up nicely to Turkey and all the fixings for sure. And a real classy bottle as well, which makes it yeah. all make you feel a little more fancy on your Thanksgiving. That's weekend. right. And it's good to support the Okanagan and, and Canadian wine and, and all that good stuff. Absolutely. Eric, as always a pleasure. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Wine Wednesday from our friends over at Co-op Wine.